following presentation is intended to provide the residents of the Brandywine School District with pertinent factual information regarding the upcoming May 17th referendum. Additional information regarding the referendum can be found in the community section of the district website. The model the state of Delaware uses to fund its public schools is markedly different than that of our surrounding sister states. Unlike Delaware, school boards in Pennsylvania and New Jersey have the ability to levy tax increases to offset increased operational expenses. Residents in these states incur an annual or biannual percentage increase automatically. The school districts of Delaware are required to go to referendum in order to garnish funding to meet expenses associated with typical cross creep and to fund any capital projects that would exceed $750,000. The last time as the Brandywine School District came to its residents for a referendum was in 2012. At that time, the district promised that the increase would be sufficient to cover a three-year period of time before it would have to return to the voters for another referendum. It also made a commitment to stretch those dollars an additional year, if possible, before it would have to return to the voters for another referendum. As faithful stewards of and for the community we serve, the district was able to stretch those funds to a fourth year. Local revenue accounts for approximately 40% of the district's overall operating budget. State funds account for about 55% and the remaining 5% are federal dollars. It's not uncommon for the amount of state and federal funding to fluctuate from year to year. You may remember that the district lost approximately $5 million in state and federal funding in 2009. Typically, the local revenue remains fairly constant, but the district did experience a reduction of about $1.3 million in local revenue this year due to the loss of AstraZeneca, the DuPont Edgemore plant, and the Evraz steel mill. This green arrow is intended to show the typical annual increases and the fact that the current local revenue is no longer sufficient to meet cost demands, resulting in the need to go to referendum. Years ago, the Brandywine School District was the first district in the state to form a district finance committee, a committee made up of local community members who are known for their expertise in the areas of business and finance. This dedicated group meets on a monthly basis and examines the district's monthly budget reports as a means of ensuring transparency and accountability. The district is fortunate to have a similar long-standing committee comprised of community members with expertise in the areas of construction and maintenance. The Facilities and Maintenance Oversight Committee also meets on a monthly basis to provide guidance and recommendations to the Board of Ed to ensure proactive and preventative maintenance to safeguard the investment local taxpayers have made in the previous capital referendums. In the spring of 2015, the District Finance Committee informed the Board of Education that a referendum would need to be sought during the 2015-16 school year. At the same time, the Facilities Oversight and Maintenance Committee, knowing that previous capital project debt retirement was coming due, proposed four projects that, if cost-shared with the state through a referendum, would have a net tax-neutral effect. As a result of the recommendations made by both the District Finance Committee and the District Maintenance Committee, the Board of Education decided to go to referendum on March 23rd with three items on a single ballot. First, an operational increase of $0.28 cents per $100 of assessed home value. Second, a capital request consisting of four projects. And finally, a third to install two synthetic turf athletic fields at each of our three high schools. The request was defeated by 163 votes. In the weeks following the March 23rd failed referendum, the District Finance Committee reconvened and made the following recommendations to the Board of Education. First, implement an $8 million cost containment plan. Second, to go back to the voters for a second request, the District Finance Committee again recommended $0.28 cents per $100 of assessed home value. They also recommended that the capital referendum previously proposed be included in the second request. The following are the details of the cost containment plan to cover the $8 million anticipated deficit. Reduction in 
district office and building administrators, district office and building level support staff, elimination of all deans of students, elimination of all interventionists, reduction in the number of teachers, reading specialists, counselors, librarians, elimination of the strings program, and elimination of staff on special assignment. Those eliminations and reductions total $3.3 million. The balance of the $8 million deficit will come in the form of cuts to budgets and programs. 15% reduction of all building budgets, 25% reduction of all district budgets, 70% reduction of district contingency fund, and elimination of summer 2016 expenditures. A 40% reduction of annual EPER. EPER is an acronym for staff earning extra pay for extra responsibilities. Elimination of EPER clubs, activities, programs. Elimination of all sports programs, except for high school varsity sports. Elimination of all after school activity bus runs. And elimination of Maple Lane's intercession programming for the 2017 18 school year. Those program and budget cuts would total about $4.7 million. So between the staff cuts and the budget cuts, $8 million has been identified. The other recommendation made by the District Finance Committee was that the Board of Ed go out for a second referendum. The Board of Education voted to go back to the voters for a second referendum on May 17th. Included in that referendum, an operational ask of $0.28 cents per $100 of assessed home value, the inclusion of the capital projects, the turf fields projects from the March 23rd referendum have been removed. The May 17th referendum will only include the operational and the capital requests shown. One of the reasons that families are attracted to neighborhoods in Brandywine is the investment that our community has made in its school facilities performing preventative maintenance while continuing to make needed upgrades and renovations will continue to not only ensure quality learning environments for our children but that the brandywine community remains attractive and appealing to prospective residents that appreciate the extended value of a community's public school system it is important to note the following points regarding the capital request the district has already secured certificates of necessity from the state for these projects. This means the state validates the legitimacy of the work that needs to be completed, and the state, if done through a referendum, agrees to cost share the work that needs to be completed. This means the state will cover 61% of the cost, and the Brandywine community, 39%. The total capital request approved by the state is $49.6 million. The referendum ballot would ask for the approval of $19.3 million in the capital portion, 39% of the total cost. The net effect of the capital request would be cost neutral to voters, since the increase will coincide with debt retirement from a previous capital request. The two will offset each other resulting in a cost-neutral effect to the taxpayer. The capital request consists of four projects, three construction projects, one at Carcroft, Claymont, and Brandywine High School. The fourth project is the demolition of the Burnett Building. The work plan for Carcroft will ensure that all buildings have the same standard of security when it comes to visitors accessing student-populated areas of the building. Relocating the main office and ensuring Carcroft meets the same safety standard as the rest of our schools is the first of three projects. The second project is Claymont Elementary School. From the road, the building appears to be in excellent condition. However, up close, you can see that structural repairs are needed. Included in the project is the replacement of operating systems. Here's an example. This electrical panel was made by Westinghouse. Westinghouse got out of that business 30 years ago, making finding replacement parts nearly impossible. This is a shot of the roof, full of inefficient heat pumps that need to be eliminated, from upgrades to classrooms, auditorium renovations, and even something as simple as 
getting the appropriate size lockers. As a former high school, these lockers weren't designed for the second graders they currently are assigned to. The students aren't able to reach the coat hooks or the shelves. Everything sits at the bottom of the locker with the muddy shoes and the wet boots. The last part of this project is the relocation of the current facilities offices and maintenance shop to the old district office site. Elimination of heavy traffic associated with these departments combined with the new parent drop-off traffic pattern will improve the safety of student travel routes and eliminate car lines from spilling into local streets, inconveniencing the local residents. Just like Claymont, Brandywine High School is in need of structural repairs that come with age, including major roof repairs. Water finds its way down into the building, causing the ceiling damage that you see in this picture. The shot is from the auditorium. In this photo, it's the windows that are leaking. The wall in the photo has been repainted several times, but the water coming in through the wall is the root of the problem. Included in the project is enclosing the exposed breezeway between the main building and the gymnasium, replacement of sidewalk and parking lot repairs, and addressing the aging HVAC system. And finally, the fourth project, again, is a demolition project of the Burnett Building. Burnett has not been used as a standalone school since 2001. With each passing year, the building becomes more and more of a liability to the district and a source of angst among the local residents. Key takeaways regarding the capital referendum. There are four projects, three major construction, one demolition. Because the request is coinciding with debt retirement, the net effect is tax neutral. All projects are essential and will need to be completed. If done through the referendum, the district will assume 39% of the cost while the state will assume 61% of the cost. If not covered through a referendum, the work will still have to be done in piecemeal and the district will assume 100% of the cost. When you think of the operational request, think of the funds that are needed to operate the district on any given day. Approximately 70% of the district's operational budget is personnel-related costs, salaries, and OECs, other employee costs. The remaining 30% is for materials, things like textbooks, desks, chairs, art supplies, copy paper, computers, software, weed whackers, and Windex. Anything and everything we need to operate. When thinking about an operational referendum, the word operation also comes to mind. When you need an operation, your doctor is telling you that you have a health issue that needs to be corrected. In order to maintain your current or previous level of performance, an operation is needed. Without it, functionality and performance will be lost. When it comes to an operational referendum, the district is saying that a health issue exists. With an operation, we will maintain full functionality and performance. No operational success will have a crippling impact on all facets of district programming and levels of service. While our facilities are selling points to potential and existing families and community, the greatest value is the district's continued reputation for outstanding academic programming and the district's deep commitment to educating the whole child with an emphasis on the value of the arts. The ability to provide high quality dynamic programming is directly tied to the operational budget. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, full-time gifted programming, strings and orchestra, advanced placement offerings, international baccalaureate program, and a variety of sports and extracurricular offerings immediately come to mind when Brandywine programming and operational expenses come to mind. It is programs such as these on which the reputation that we enjoy has been built. The district's total operating budget is about $174 million. And this is a combination of state, federal, and local funds. 40% of that, or about $66 million, is local revenue. This amount is basically divided into three buckets. Personnel, fixed, and non-personnel. Personnel, again, is salaries 
and what we call OECs, other employee costs, fixed, primarily utilities. We know that we spent $3 million last year on utilities, and we're pretty certain that we'll be spending right around $3 million next year on utilities. And finally, the non-personnel, all the materials and resources needed to run the district on any given day. If we remove the fixed costs, $63 million, it's from that amount that the $8 million in cost cuts must come. At the heart of this thought lies financial stewardship. While this thought is certainly true, the district hasn't waited for tough times to hit before practicing financial stewardship. As a core value, the expectation of fiscal responsibility is a guiding principle for every department, every day, for which multiple checks and balances have been implemented to provide full transparency and accountability. Being fiscally responsible and demonstrating financial stewardship takes many forms, some of which are publicly known like the cuts and eliminations made in 2009, and the district's emphasis on financial transparency. In addition to the District Finance Committee, another group of community members serve on the Renovation Oversight Committee, the only committee of its kind in the state, proposed and implemented by the Board of Education in 2012. This group of community stakeholders meets on a quarterly basis to review the district's progress on key initiatives contained in the 2012 referendum and to ensure that the dollars specifically targeting these projects are being spent as promised. Similarly, behind the scenes, our CFO, Scott Kessel, has implemented business office protocols that allow for real-time monitoring of all district expenses across all departments that include a tiered approval process so that multiple approvers serve as the appropriate checks and balances prior to executing any financial transaction. This multi-tiered approval process culminates with the CFO serving as the final approver in which he reviews and individually approves each line item of each requisition. Another behind the scenes example is the work performed by the district staff allocations team to ensure that the district not only lives within its earned units from the state, but that the units are appropriately allocated based on need, the staff allocations team was created. To date, this team's work has identified and realized cost savings equivalent to 21 positions. The district is also constantly seeking alternate funding sources in the forms of grants and donations to cover costs that would have impacted locally funded budgets. In addition, four years ago, Dr. Holodick and three other superintendents formed the Brink Consortium. The consortium is now seven districts large and represents over 52% of the state's public school students. One of the many tremendous benefits being realized by the consortium is the leveraged purchasing power and cost savings advantages. Included in financial stewardship is delivering results for the investment being made. All of us want to know that we're getting the bang for the buck. The following are just a few examples showing that Brandywine continues to deliver for students, parents, families, and our community. Since 2011, Brandywine has experienced the greatest amount of student achievement growth since the district has been tracking data. Not only are all students growing, but students in our subgroups are growing at a greater pace, which means our efforts at closing the achievement gap are paying off. The graph is but a single example showing low-income versus non-low-income in reading. In this four-year comparison, increases of 8 to 9% are considered high. Notice how many groups are in double digits. Data similar to this for other subgroups in reading and mathematics show evidence of a narrowing of the achievement gap, a gap that is still far too great and demands our continued attention. Two years ago, Brandywine School District had the highest performing comprehensive traditional public high school in the state. Last year, Brandywine had the first and second highest comprehensive traditional public high schools in the state on the SATs. Recently, several of our students have been in the news for their perfect and near-perfect scores on portions of the SAT. This is a picture of the Concord Alpha 1 team. They recently placed first in the nation 
in the Source America Ability 1 Design Challenge. Check out the press release announcing the collegiate and high school winners. What's the level of competition? Duke University took first place in the nation for the collegiate competition. Concord High School, Brandywine School District, took first place at the high school level. That is elite company, directly resulting from elite programming. A fluke? No. Last year, Mount Pleasant High School had a TSA team that took first place in the nation. Two years ago, Concord had an MIT Lemelson Award-winning team, one of only 15 in the country to receive the award. The year before that, a fourth-place team in the Ability One Challenge. Last year, Brandywine High School was first place in the state in Math League. P.S. DuPont took first place in the Math Counts competition and competed in the national competition. This year we have two Odyssey of the Mind teams that will be competing in the World Championships. Just a few weeks ago, the Mount Pleasant High School VEX Robotics team missed going to the World Competition by one loss. Every year we have numerous Scholastic Writing Competition Award winners, and we recently learned in late April that P.S. DuPont has the highest scores in the state on the TEAMS assessment. TEAMS stands for the Test of Engineering, Aptitude, Mathematics, and Science. The list continues to grow and goes on and on. The 2012 referendum specifically included funds for an initiative to once again provide interventionists at the elementary school level. The work done around school climate since that time, through positive behavior support, responsive classrooms, deans of students, and kindergarten through 12th grade interventionists, has delivered an amazing 46% reduction in behavior referrals. Availability and accessibility to instructional technology for students. In 2011-12, there were 35 mobile devices deployed in the district, 35 tablets or iPads available for students to use in the classroom on a daily basis. By the time this young man walked through the school doors for the 2016-17 school year, the instructional technology plan will have placed over 5,000 mobile devices where they should be in the classroom, in the hands of students, as a necessary component of educating today's 21st century learner. The graduating classes from 2012 to 2015 have earned over $84 million in awards and scholarships. There's three reasons, not only for this incredible accomplishment, but all the accomplishments we just reviewed and the hundreds of others that could have been listed. First, there's no doubt about it, we have great students. Second, we have great staff. From outstanding and dedicated educators to custodial maintenance, providing clean and healthy learning environments, paraprofessionals, food service workers, transportation, building and district administrators, each directly and indirectly contributing to the overall success of our students. While we're thrilled about the programmatic changes that have been implemented, the new opportunities afforded to students, and the outcomes being evidenced, the core value of demonstrating stewardship to our community demands that we continuously strive to advance educational opportunities for all students, was the driving force behind the creation of the 2015 District Success Plan. This plan can be found on our district website. The following are just a few broad themes contained in that plan to better meet the individualized learning needs of all students, where they focus on blended and personalized learning opportunities, to ensure that we continue to focus on the social and emotional development of students, to ensure that our students are technologically proficient to meet the challenges of a 21st century world, continuation and expansion of STEM programming, and to use long distance learning opportunities to provide a greater course and elective offerings for students. The following is not intended to be a scare tactic of any kind. In fact, it's nothing more than informing the community with the same level of openness and transparency consistently offered. Should the May 17th referendum not be successful, 
the $8 million in eliminations and reductions outlined in the cost containment plan will be implemented and the impact will significantly alter the programming, services, and outcomes historically delivered by the district. Deep significant cuts that will not only have obvious direct impact, but the cuts will also have far-reaching ripple effects across all facets and operations of the district. Coupled with the loss of talented and dedicated employees will be the loss and reduction of the dynamic programming we currently offer. While efforts will be made to protect the classroom as cuts are implemented, class sizes will increase, and the valuable supports that contribute to the learning that happens in the classroom will be greatly diminished. With the proposed cuts, there's little doubt that school climate won't be significantly impacted, the instructional technology initiative abandoned, and essential building maintenance issues indefinitely placed on hold as plans are devised to piecemeal repairs as funds are sought from other budgets, budgets already significantly reduced as detailed in the cost containment plan. In addition to the direct impact and ripple effects, the cuts will have long-lasting significant residual effects. One doesn't need to look far to find very real examples of districts fighting the lingering effects of failed referendums for years, well past an eventual successful referendum. There's also a catch-22. For the capital projects and several that haven't been mentioned, the district has the opportunity to cost share paying only a portion of the cost instead of incurring 100% of the costs in the future. And, outside a referendum, the local budget will bear the burden. Key takeaways regarding the operational referendum. In 2012, the district guaranteed not to return to the community for another referendum for three years. And it's made good on its commitment to try and stretch the dollars an additional fourth year. There's a rumor that's been started that the district is requesting a 28% increase in local taxes. That is incorrect. The ask is 28 cents per $100 of assessed home value. An unsuccessful referendum would mean an $8 million deficit. And finally, when we do pass the referendum, the excellence that is Brandywine will continue. Please mark your calendars for this critical referendum vote. Tuesday, May 17th, polls open at 10 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Remember, every vote counts, and we need your continued support to keep the Brandywine School District moving forward.